Have we reached the end of the line for the NBA slam dunk contest as we know it? I think so, and I blame Cedric Sabalos. I'll explain in a minute, but look, if you like the NBA slam dunk contest as it is, let me know in the comments. I'm just curious because as it stands, Mac McClung has just won back-to-back -back NBA slam dunk contests at the time of this recording. And he's not even an NBA player. So how did we get to this point where what was initially supposed to be a showcase of NBA athletic talent is now an entertainment spectacle where you don't even have to be an NBA player to participate? Let me take you back to 1991 where I think the problem started. Up until the 1990s, the NBA slam dunk contest really was about the athleticism of the NBA players. From the original dunk contest winner Julius Irving, Dr. J with the ABA at that time in 1976, to the man who many believe is the greatest player of all time, MJ, Michael Jordan. Both Dr. J and MJ were famous in dunk contests because of their finesse and their hang time. Both of those men dunked from the free throw line. But we also saw winners like Dominique Wilkins, who showed incredible power dunking and agility, and his Atlanta Hawks teammate, Spud Webb, who at just five foot seven had amazing leaping ability. In 1990, we saw the debut of power dunker Sean Kemp of the Seattle Supersonics. Dominique Wilkins won that contest. But Sean Kemp came back again in 1991 and made it to the finals. And in that 91 dunk contest final, Kemp was up against the Boston Celtics six foot one guard, D. Brown. They were two very different style dunkers. Kemp was a six foot 10 power dunker who really rocked the rim. D. Brown, being six foot one, was a leaper and had a ton of finesse. And for those of us old enough to remember, D. Brown won that contest when he pumped up his shoes and then did a blind dunk. And he did that by covering his eyes with his elbow. So there was a combination of incredible athletic ability and also some prop entertainment with the pumping up of the shoes. But let's remember, shoes are not an added accessory. Every basketball player needs to have something on their feet. Now fast forward to the 1992 dunk contest where Charlotte Hornets rookie Larry Johnson put on an amazing performance and ended up in the final against none other than Cedric Sabalos. Now Cedric knew he had to do something really unusual and amazing to win this contest because Johnson's performance was so good. What did he do? Well, the blind dunk had worked so well for D. Brown, he took that a step further and brought out the blindfold. And that's the first time I remember artificial props being used in the NBA slam dunk contest. If you remember an earlier time, let me know in the comments but I think that's what started this madness we now have in the NBA dunk contest today. We've reached a point where all of the athletic dunks have been repeated over and over and over again. So every year, somebody has to come up with something fresh to keep the crowd entertained and to keep the judges interested enough to give a high score. And while there have been a couple of players who have won with those athletic abilities, for example, Kobe Bryant in 97 with a between the legs Legs dunk that scored him a 49 out of 50, and Vince Carter in 2000 with an unforgettable athletic dunk. But we've seen more and more props. In 2008, we saw Gerald Green blow out a candle on a cupcake before jamming the ball through the hoop. And in that same year, we saw Dwight Howard dressed as Superman. And for a big man, Howard really could fly. Blake Griffin had a lot of hops and he jumped over a car in 2011 to win that NBA dunk contest. And if mascots count as a prop, there was Aaron Gordon in 2016, who jumped a mascot while putting the ball under his legs for what many believe is one of the best dunks in NBA dunk contest history. Even with all of that showmanship, and some of it was impressive, you have to think that those guys were running out of ideas for new and interesting dunks to watch. And the NBA probably knew things were getting a little dry as well, because in 2023, they invited Mac McClung from the G League 
to participate in the dunk contest on All-Star Weekend. Why? It may be that the NBA wants to promote the G League more and get some more fans out for a minor league experience, although technically McClung was a 76er for two weeks in 2023. But one thing we know for sure is Mac McClung is truly an athletic dunker. In this age of professional dunkers on social media that have no connection to the NBA whatsoever, but are clearly superior at their craft, Mac McClung is kind of a hybrid between the two. He's somewhat close to the NBA being in G League, and yet he's somewhat close to those professional dunkers because of his athletic ability. So you have to think that when the NBA sees pro dunkers on social media getting millions of views, they must have seen an opportunity in Mac McClung to perhaps get some of those eyeballs back on All-Star Saturday night. Now we haven't seen McClung use props like a Superman costume or a blindfold, but he did get some help from other people, and most recently he won the 2024 NBA dunk contest with a huge 50-point dunk over Shaq. Not everybody has that kind of leaping ability. Remember, Shaq is seven foot one, McClung is just six foot two. So McClung brought his A-game from an entertainment perspective, but remember, he's not an NBA player, so this isn't showcasing NBA players. And the question remains, what can the NBA do next to keep people coming back to the dunk contest on All-Star Weekend? For me, it comes down to these two things. Option one, does the NBA want to put on a great professional dunking show? If so, they're gonna have to look at doing something like bringing in the popular social media dunkers to get the very best dunking entertainment. But I don't think that's what they want. The purpose is to show off the NBA. And those dunkers from social media will put most of the NBA dunkers to shame. Option two. Does the NBA go back to the drawing board now and come up with some new form of entertainment that allows for that showcasing of its own NBA players? From a business perspective, to me, that's the answer. And the dunk contest? Its lifespan has run out. So what do you think the NBA could do instead? Or maybe you like the dunk contest and you have some ideas for how to make it better. Let me know in the comments. Let's discuss. All the best.